Welcome back to another episode. Uh, this episode we have the Solex on the bench. That's because we will be attempting to fix the rear brake. Uh, this braking system is a what we locally call here a torpedo style brake or a back pedal brake. Not sure the correct English term for it. But uh, basically the wheel spins and you pedal backwards to brake. Like so. But the only issue with this one is when you push back it actually starts the pedals moving back forward again, like you can see here. Which is a bit annoying and especially dangerous. I was uh, rolling at uh, 36 kilometers an hour when this brake gave in and then just started pushing me back forward. Uh, I can tell you it's a sketchy thing. So we will try to fix this brake. I'm not sure. I've never opened one of these hubs with this braking system, so it will be a first one for me as well. So without further ado, let's uh, start by taking the rear wheel off and see what we have. Solex wheel. got the hub out it's not that hard just some uh, nuts keep them in the correct order but uh, this is the first time I'm actually looking into a hub like this it's actually a pretty interesting way of uh, braking it, uh, it actually uses clutches so what happens is you have this hub which is shaped like the clutch like these clutch uh, plates, I'm going to call them, these outer plates. They have a hex shape. So, the... Oh, just put it back together. The sp rear sprocket has a worm gear on it. And just twists in, in this nut, which has a thread in it. And if you kick back, what you can see is this inside piece here comes out of course this normally is assembled and then just moves normally you 
push backwards. This intersection comes towards the clutch plates and then puts tension on them, which causes them to lock up. And um, because of the shape of the hub, then you get some braking motion because these plates get extra friction because of the pres pressure and that causes the rear wheel to So after cleaning all of the parts, uh, I've also gathered a bit of information. So this brake system is called a Bexon hub. And basically you have these friction plates. Those work a bit like a normal clutch, like you have in a DRD or the FS1 or whatever. And uh, you have some space in between these friction plates that causes your hub to spin freely and when you push backwards you have this worm gear that pushes uh, another worm into the friction plates with, which causes them to close up and that causes friction so you break. That's a um, basic explanation of how this thing works. I've found some extra information on how to adjust this and that's what we're going to do. So we have uh, the axle itself with the bearing. I'm going to grease these bearings later on. Then you have this first, I'm not sure what it's called, this first disc with the slots in. The slots should face the bearings, if I remember correctly. And then you start adding the friction plates. They should go on like this. One by one. There we go. Now we have another one of these uh, slotted discs. Should go out with the slots facing outwards. And then you have uh, the worm gear. I'm not sure with the conical part like this. I'm not sure how this is called in English, but uh, it's this part. <laughs> and this should fit onto here. I have to align the squares. There we go. There we go. Then we have this big nut, the bearing ring. And then this sh should slide in. As you can see, this uh, inner piece works. If you push forward, it opens up, which causes these friction discs to be free. And when you push backwards, of course, this isn't tight yet. Then there is pressure on these friction plates and they stop moving. I think I actually have to loosen this thing because everything need to, needs to be tightened from this way but if I tighten it now I can mount it in the hub because of this ring here. And this is the this is the fix uh, side of the axle where the friction discs rest on so I have to tighten it from this direction which means I first have to loosen this one. So, got the backing nuts off with uh, the bearing. As you can see, it's one of these special nuts. Uh, they weren't that tight, but I will have to find my tool to tighten them back up. But that's for later. So, back to assembly. the first friction plate and then the rest of the entire stack goes on. So now we have to add some grease and put in these uh, ball bearings. And now we have this um, strange nut which has this groove uh, on it, and that's where the balls uh, run on. 
So this one goes first. With this nut, you adjust the amount of play you have in your friction discs, which also defines how much you have to uh, pedal backwards for to start braking. So the way you adjust this, as per instructions from a Bexen instruction manual, you have to have 1.5 millimeters between the friction discs. So the way I'm going to do it is uh, I'm going to use two M6 washers. I'm going to space them in between the friction discs. I've measured, measured them. They are uh, 1.6 millimeters, so it's actually a bit too much, but I don't think the 0.1 millimeter will make that much difference. If so, I can always go back and readjust it a little bit. There you go. The washers are in. The nut is in place. And now I can remove the washers and this should be 1.5 millimeters of play. Uh, next step is this uh, dust boot. You have to put it in. Like so. There we go. This keeps the grease from falling out or getting contaminated. So next up is this locking washer that has a little tab on it which fits in this groove. And then we have the uh, locking nut for the uh, whole assembly. And there we go. And now these are just the washers and nuts to mount the hub into the bike. But there is one more step we have to do. Uh, that is, we have to soak these friction discs in some oil. As per instruction, we have to dip this section in some uh, SAE 90 oil, which is some thick gearbox oil. I think we have some, so I will have to find a bucket. So we basically have to just dip it in some oil and then uh, just leave it for a minute or, or two, just so it can lose all the excess oil. Shake it off a little bit. That way it has a thin film of oil, which um, should protect these plates. It doesn't have to be filled with oil, just a fine coat should be fine. So I'm going to look in my oil supply and find some SAE 90. So I've find, found some oil. Yes, I know ATW 90 is not exactly the same as SAE 90, but um, I think just for this hub, this should be fine. The biggest difference in these oils are that the W system has been tested at lower operating temperatures than the SAE system. But for just a Bexen hub, I don't think it matters that much because I don't think these, this oil in this hub gets that hot. So I'm going to dunk it in and maybe have some rotate a little bit just so I've got oil in between every friction disc. Now all I have left to do is just wait here for a couple of minutes until most of the excess oil is gone and then I can put this thing in the hub. Oh, the smell is so horrid. So that should be it. Nice and gooey. So the Bexen hub is ready to go back into the wheel. There's just one thing we have left to do and that is to grease up these bearing grooves. I'm actually going to add a bit of grease in the bearing themselves because I did clean, deep clean these. Goodness gracious me. Maybe should have done this beforehand. So 
So yeah, pro tip, grease up your bearings before, beforehand. So let's just align the friction plates so it fits in the hub. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's correct. It breaks. Okay, so that's that. Now, grease up this other bearing. So, I've uh, tightened this uh, bearing nut just so that it uh, doesn't have any play but doesn't have too much friction might come back later on to adjust it we'll see then we have this dust cap which also has two little indents here that fit into um, the bearing nut then we have um, the locking washer also with a little tab that fits in the groove of the axle right here and then the locking nut. I can't find the tool I need, but this doesn't have to be over tight, so I'll just tighten it with a channel lock for the time being. There we go. Rotates nicely. Then uh, the only thing that's left is to actually mount it back uh, into the bike and add this um, lever. And then I think we can take it for a test drive. So I'm going to put it back in the bike just like I took it out of the bike and uh, I'll be back in an instant.